Today I wanna to teach you exactly how I took this ordinary twin motion import all the way through to this amazing twin motion export. What's going on guys? My name's David Tomich and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, firstly, thank you so much for joining me. On this channel, we talk about technology and architecture. Today, I wanna to show you some of the skills I've learned during my professional career as an architect. I wanna show you exactly how to use twin motion and take it from a boring basic render to something incredible that you can present to your client and even charge for if you're really looking to. So let's turn around to these two monitors and start creating maybe something a little bit more dark and moody than usual. Okay, so because we're creating something in Twin Motion, you don't need to see my face all day. We wanna get nice, dark and moody and really create something special here. So we've got our Twin Motion export open and it's pretty boring, pretty generic. The house has been designed, it's pretty much finished, but the rest of it isn't just looking how we want it to. So what we're gonna do is first, go into that original image one and start playing around with the actual light and surrounding settings. So we click on more, we change the location because this is in Western Australia, we're gonna take it to Perth, but obviously you can place that absolutely anywhere you want. Personally, I like to see it in the morning as well, so we're gonna set it to just during sunrise. And we're gonna move that north point around to ensure we get the absolute best sun location. The north point isn't pivotal in an architectural render like this because you're not showcasing how it actually look, you're more so trying to sell the building itself. Okay, so I think personally these settings work really well. 6 a.m. in the morning, December, and a 30 degree north offset. It allows that sun to shine directly onto the building and we're gonna start casting shadows across the streetscape as well a little bit later on. So we've set up our localization, we wanna to move to our weather and start putting in some clouds. You can see that as we start moving it through the seasons, everything changes ever so slightly. Personally, I don't think the water down the bottom in twin motion is perfect just yet, so I avoid it and I try to go to some early cloud separation. I like to keep it as neutral as possible because that way when we take it into Lightroom later on down the track, we can actually create all the colors and all the seasons that we want by adjusting those settings. So now we have all our lighting set up and it's already a hundred times better than where it was when we first imported it. Now what we wanna do is start adding some materiality and some texture to this individual render here. So Twin Motion has some great built-in textures so you don't have to go and download anything, but there are many resources out there. I talk about them in different videos. Feel free to check them out if you want to, but we're gonna start with the actual landscaping. So we wanna make sure that the grass is all consistent. We don't wanna have different grass types. So materials, ground, nature. I like grass too personally, and I apply it everywhere. Now, grass too looks all well and good, but you wanna make it look even better. You wanna make it look a million dollars. So what you wanna do is come up to this context tab, go vegetation paint, come back out to grass and flowers and select the grass that you personally like. Personally, I don't mind grass three or grass one. Grass one more so because I can edit it how I want after in Lightroom. So I'm gonna choose long grass one, drag and drop it. Click on that, maximum 100% density. We can check in the settings if you wanna make it any bigger, smaller, dryness, etc. But for the time being, we'll keep it exactly as it is. We'll go back into that. Click on the grass one, select the paintbrush, and make a one meter diameter. And all we have to do now is carefully and slowly paint the grass on. And there we have it. All our grass is painted on for that section of the house. I didn't want to bore you, so I skipped ahead. Now it's important that the grass looks consistent in this render throughout. You don't want to go and make this guy's house beautiful lush green grass and this poor bastard terrible burnt grass. So you wanna apply the same principle to all the grass that you can see in the shot. If we go back to our image one, we can see that the grass on the left isn't seen, but everything on the right hand side is. So what we have to do is continue painting. I'll skip ahead again. And there we go. All the grass on the neighboring property is now completed. So if we were to come back to our original image that we're looking to export, you can see that the grass is completed. For some reason, it is not showing up because of all these green little triangles but be assured it is definitely there. So when you export it, it will be seen a lot better. 
Next, we wanna focus on the surrounding streetscape. Unfortunately, as important as the house is, to make an architectural render look good, the street has to look very realistic. The surrounding bits and pieces have to look realistic. If we wanted to go even further, we changed that white block of a house to something that we did in another project, but for the time being, it's absolutely fine. The street poles, again, are very important. It gives you some sort of context to where it might be. And in this particular case, that street pole actually is there. So it's important that that client knows they're gonna see that big ugly street pole and have absolutely no way around it. Moving more onto the actual streetscape and creating some more patterns and textures along this side of the road. So what we wanna do is come back out into our materials panel and start changing the road and everything around it. So we'll go to ground, we'll go man-made and we'll put asphalt one on the road. Asphalt one is a nice dark black texture and it looks really, really good. For the driveway themselves, we wanna come back out and go to concrete and then use aggregate. Personally, I think aggregate is just a great product for driveways in architectural renders and it creates something stunning. What you'll notice, however, is the aggregate is quite small. So we wanna increase the scale to about where we see fit. I think personally, exposed aggregate at four looks really good. The contrast between the curbing and the road, again, really important. What we can do is change that materiality of the curbing as well to a different form of concrete if we want, just to really break it up and give it some texture. So if we go to base concrete three, we can change that and adjust it to however we see fit. Maybe two scale in this one is the perfect scenario. Now the road looks great, but the road is just a black road. There's nothing along it. There's nothing giving us detail. And we really want to emphasize the reality of this render. So if we come back out to objects and go to decals, we start getting our road style markers. We want to use as little as we can not to force our computer to render too much. So we'll go back into our decals and we'll use line marking one for the side of the road. If we push it to 90 degrees and originally place it just as close as we can to the side of the road, somewhere about here, We've tabbed through to be able to get all our different options if you haven't used twin motion before. And we know we don't see too much of that, but we do see quite a bit of this road. So we wanna hold shift, click on the arrow and drag it across just before you see how it overlaps and starts disappearing. We wanna connect that and make maybe 20 copies and we have our first line. We wanna quickly drag that while it's all highlighted to the other side of the road perfectly just there and copy that across. So now if we come back into our image, we see that we have the first render, the first curbing, a little bit of dirt there, and I'm probably gonna readjust my render to this spot here. I think that looks a lot better because you have the curb, you have the ground, and you have a lot more context. One thing we are missing is a center line that is dashed. So if we go back into our decals panel in the object section and select the dashed line marking, rotate at nine degrees so it goes the right way, that's roughly in the middle of the road, which is pretty good. What we wanna do is the same thing we did a second ago. So hold shift, drag it across till it lines up perfectly, make 20 copies of it and click okay. So now we go back to our image to reevaluate re and again, it's starting to look a lot more realistic. We have that line separation. We have that center line. We have the natural grass. We have the different style of earth at the bottom. We have to work on that a little bit, but we'll get to that in a second. So now we have our driveway over here and our neighboring driveway. Our neighboring driveway looks a little bit sad, so we're gonna change the materials and textures of that as well. It, for some reason, has a brick driveway, so we're gonna continue to use the brick driveway. We go into the brick utensils and we pick a brick that we believe will look good as a driveway. Because this is gray, I'm probably gonna pick a gray brick to match it and scale it up to about six, I think probably looks a bit more realistic. So now if, again, if we go back to our image to compare what it's starting to look like, it's starting to build that character and build that form. It's starting to look a lot more realistic. What we wanna continue doing is now emphasizing that streetscape. Because the sun is beaming on this side of the house, we wanna try and landscape this side of the property as much as possible. So we're gonna start putting in some very large trees to be able to do that. In this case, there actually is very large trees on this side of the road, so that's why this works out really well. And the trees in question 
are the West Red Ciders. So what we're gonna do is just multiply that tree across the entire property as much as we can. So we're gonna leave it maybe about 10 meter spacing and we're gonna copy about 50 of those trees. I have no idea if that's too many or not, definitely too many, but doesn't matter. We're also gonna focus on the shrubs and the base bushes down the bottom because our original image does capture a little bit of that base bush. So we have that tree coming in, which is really nice and really pretty, but the natural ground looks a bit average. So we're gonna focus on just this little section of natural ground and not worry about anything else for the time being because we're just focusing on this one export. If you're making multiple photos, then obviously focus on the whole thing. But for this, we're just doing it for that one little section. We wanna go into our materials and change that natural ground. So back into ground, back into nature, and we wanna select something that we believe looks a little bit better. So maybe some grassy ground. Mm, I don't like that personally. How about some forest ground? Excellent, forest ground looks a lot better. This tree looks a little bit fake, but that's okay. If we scale that forest ground up, I believe to about two, will look quite nice and start adding some base bushes around this entire section. So even now we aren't even looking at our house, we can see how that shadow is being cast on the road, that sun is beckoning through the side and it's starting to look really, really nice. We wanna use very generic base bushes because obviously this would be council property, this wouldn't be somebody's house. So the base bushes would actually just be shrubbery. They wouldn't be anything fancy. It would genuinely just be very basic shrubs. And then we come back into our first render. Well, now we've got too many trees. So let's delete just the couple that we are probably having our camera angle from. What we can also do to make this road look a little bit better before we start focusing on that house there is add some sewers and some drains. So if we come back into decals like we were before for the road markings, at the bottom, you can start finding sewer grates. So personally, I like to use them right at the edge, close to some houses, and make sure they're coming over the line. So we don't want that line to overlap in any way, shape, or form. So what we're gonna have to do, unfortunately, is move that one line back away from the sewer and create a copy of this line just here to give it that reality of it. We're gonna replicate the same thing on the other side, right where our image is, so you can see that sewer somewhere roughly here, and it gives it some really good context and detail. So that is the wrong orientation in my opinion. We're gonna drag it back, place it a little bit further out of sight so it isn't obvious that it's fake, and take this one linear line and move it out of the way. We're gonna do the same thing we've done on the side and copy that one line by holding shift and clicking on the directional arrow, and clicking okay. If we go back to our image now, we can see that sewers coming into perspective. If we wanna take it further, I know I did say the puddles look a bit average, but we can put a small little puddle around that sewer, maybe not that one. There we go, puddle two, just so it looks like that water is draining down into that sewer. So again, it's about that context making it real as much as possible you don't want to be just stopping at the fine details you really want to be looking at every detail so now we've mastered the surrounding streetscape and we've mastered what the entire property is going to look like it's time to focus on the actual vegetation of that property and any vehicles and movements around the site so what we're going to start with is a basic vehicle vehicles there's plenty to choose from in twin motion which is great so we're going to just pick a small little car actually probably a big car because it is a big house um, maybe this Range Rover looking car rotate that 90 degrees I want it to face forward I don't like it being black personally I think it blends in too much the scene so I want it to be white in this case if we go back to our render scene there's that beautiful Range Rover in front of that multi-million dollar home that power pole is looking a little bit fake in my opinion so we probably want to change the color of that a little bit darker their dark green kind of burnt timber here in Australia. So we really wanna make it that darker color just naturally. So it disappears and it looks just like a natural shadow. Continuing with the landscaping, we wanna add a couple trees here and there so we can provide some sort of detail into this house. Uh, potentially with a city object. So if we go back to objects, city planters, there's some nice planters in the city that you can utilize for big spaces. So. 
I like this one here personally for these spaces because it doubles as a bench. So we just have to tab our way through to these black squares so we can adjust the size of the planter. So we're gonna make sure that planter fits perfectly in this space. And there we have it. Our first planter is completed with the plant already in there. Our second planter, which needs to go over here and is the wrong color, stone fine limestone. We don't want that. We want some sort of rocks, some sort of ground cover. So we'll go into nature and use the pebbles to create that little feature. That's probably not actually gonna be seen from our render, so it's not too big of a deal. We wanna go then into objects and back into city and planters. I personally reckon the city planters are better than the actual uh, living room planters in this case, just because that's what I like. I like this one here, it looks good. I don't like the tree in question, so you can double click and start deleting that terrible tree inside and replacing it with whatever plant you can find. So I'll go back and there we go. We have our first cat palm sitting in that beautiful pot right in front of the house. For some reason, this is meant to be a nice stone wall and it's shown as plywood. So we just wanna double check it is stone stacked. It's just generated the wrong material from ArchiCAD into Twinmotion. If we go into stones and select the stack stone that would best reflect on this house, most likely I believe stone three would fit perfectly. And it's gonna be much larger stones than that. So there we go three times scale, that stone wall is starting to take effect. The roof and the slab is meant to be concrete in this situation, so we're gonna select a concrete that looks a little bit nice, a little bit textured, but not too overpowering. So maybe bare concrete too, scaled up to an absolute maximum, gives you a nice finish. So if we look at that concrete in more detail, it looks good, but it's very glossy, so we're gonna bring that back down. Perfect, now we have our concrete slab, and our concrete stairs at the very front. It's all the same texture in ArchiCAD, so it's linked it all together. The windows, in my personal opinion, never transfer across correctly, so you wanna go into glass and use reflective glass. I think reflective glass allows it to be reflecting the actual atmosphere, but also giving you an inside look as well. If you just go clear glass, it just, it doesn't look good, it looks like it's missing. So I think personally, reflective glass looks really nice. If we go back to our image, we can start adjusting that reflective glass how we like it. So if we want it to be a little bit darker, a little bit black to give it that nice sharp contrast from the building, we can adjust it further in the color settings and oh, I think it looks quite nice with a darker black windows, but not too dark. Perfect, I think that is a nice contrast between the building and between the glass. The last element is of course the wood but I think the wood is a nice natural color. It just needs to be a little bit darker. So we we'll use the eyedropper tool and bring that wood color a little bit further down without completely ruining it. So now we've emphasized all of the elements of the house, the landscaping and everything that is in shot here today. What we wanna do is focus a little bit on this driveway here to make sure it's not so bare and bland and then we're gonna focus on the rear property itself. Even though this is a driveway and it isn't landscaped, we are gonna throw a couple small flowers and a couple small bushes on the side here just to break it up. We don't want anything overpowering, so we'll probably go with a small little bush and do what we did with the lines and the trees and just replicate them multiple times over. So now we see all those trees coming in. What we wanna to continue to do is add some elements and some life to this section. So we'll probably add another car just at the rear of this property so it doesn't look so bare. And there we go, we have a small car at the back. It's probably a bigger car than it needs to be. A couple trees along the side and I'm probably gonna place one more massive tree just on this side to really tie that focus into the center of the house. So if we go back into our vegetation and landscaping and select a nice big tree just to really break it up. That's oh, not that one, probably that tree there. And we're gonna make it significantly larger and move it further inland. So now that tree is just starting to frame the house and we're starting to focus our eyes to the masterpiece in the center. We also wanna add a nice tree in the background to hide this white element of a house that we've set up as a placeholder. So we'll select a small linear tree that isn't too overpowering. 
potentially something like an English U will be quite nice from that vista. So we'll just go back into our image to make sure that isn't too overpowering. And it is. Personally, that tree is way too overpowering. So maybe we just make it a little bit smaller and push it a little bit further away. Okay, so now we've landscaped the side, we've landscaped the rear property, we've landscaped everything, we've made the road look nice, we've put some shadows casting over the road so it isn't glaring with sun. We've made sure our house is looking phenomenal. Now it's time to work on our lighting. Now looking at this house, it's missing the lighting elements, it's missing some architectural detail. So what I'd really like to do is create one long strip light across the top slab and one long strip light across the bottom slab. We can do that in ARCHICAD very slim simply and I'm not gonna demonstrate how to do that. We'll just use a slab and color code it differently and I'm sure you guys already know how to do that, especially if you're able to bring a house like this into Twin Motion already. Okay, so now we've relinked our Twin Motion and ARCHICAD model and we've created that nice neon strip in the ceiling. It obviously isn't correctly materialized, so we're going to go back into material, scroll to the bottom and select neon. And then because we've color coded it correctly, we can just add neon one. And there we go. We have a nice multi-million dollar linear architectural lighting feature on this house. And that, personally speaking, looks absolutely fantastic. So now what we have, if we go back to our original image, is a beautiful image ready for exporting and ready for color grading. So the image so far looks really good. It looks a million dollars, but it still isn't perfect. Twinmotion gives you some great exports, but unless you know how to use Lightroom as well, then unfortunately, this is gonna be the best you can produce out of Twinmotion. Now I say no Lightroom, what I'm about to show you makes Lightroom the simplest process ever. So what we're gonna do is just quickly export this and jump into Lightroom. Okay, so we've imported our render into Lightroom and if you've seen my presets video, I'll link it down below or you can go straight to the presets down below and grab these presets for yourself if you know what you're doing. But I've already pre-installed all my presets that I use for twin motion exports specifically. If we go through them, we'll see that it adjusts the lighting based on the seasons. So we have summer external internal, winter external internal, autumn on all the works. Like I was already saying, this is a dark and moody video. So I think we're gonna go for a winter external vibe. And all of a sudden, if we look at the original image versus the color graded image, it is a phenomenal difference. I think personally these shadows are potentially a little bit too dark so we can just bring up those shadows a tiny little touch and adjust that temperature just slightly down to minus 10. So now it is a beautiful striking image that looks a million dollars. Anyway, that's all for me today guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you were able to create something just as beautiful as this architectural render. If there's anything you need from me, please feel free to leave a comment down below. I happily answer as many questions as I can. And because this video forms one of my 28 videos in 28 days for February of 2021, it would usually be, I'll see you next Monday. But in this case, I'll see you tomorrow.